Hi, all you VIP kid teachers out there or potential VIP kid teachers. Um, I thought I would pop on and do a quick video. I actually was thinking about a few things um, today in my mind that I wanted to bring up in a video. And I got an email from someone that said, more videos. <laughs> um, of course, we were busy uh, over this last week celebrating um, Easter. Uh, my family um, really enjoys celebrating Easter um, as it relates to our faith. So um, we had a great opportunity to have some family time and to just get a chance to um, celebrate um, the true meaning of Easter. So I took some time off and I was out of my orange shirt for a few days. And now uh, this morning, Monday morning was a, a, a little bit of a rude wake up call to a 4 a.m. class, you know, when I took a few days off in a row. And that's not something I normally do, but I'm back. I'm back into my uh, orange swing of things and I'm ready to go. Uh, I thought I would just do a quick video for new teachers. I get on average, uh, well, let's, let's not even say on average, just today alone, I had 32 emails from different people um, with just questions uh, regarding um, either pre, you know, I'm not a teacher yet and I'm asking questions through to help, this just happened, what do I do, I'm a new teacher, um, that kind of thing. So I thought I would just toss out a few that were actually just sitting in my inbox today and um, or the last few days that um, I hadn't had a chance to get to because of the holiday. So the first one is um, was just a very simple question that somebody came up with and it never dawned on me during my time teaching as of yet. But they simply sent me a question and said, does this clock ever stop? Does that clock stop? ticking because it's just going and going and going and I'm done with the class and I'm typing the feedback and the class the the time is still ticking and the point they made was a good question and that was well how do they know if I start the, st the class and end the class on time because that's a part of my um, you know a part of my incentive upon hire is that I um, not only complete the class but I complete it on time you know, from beginning to end and teach the full amount. And that's a good question. So here's the answer. Every class that you teach is recorded. And some people that gives them, makes them nervous. I've had people email me just uh, this last week and said, that makes me nervous. What are they going to do with this footage? Am I going to be, um, is information about me going to be used improperly? Is it going to be posted on YouTube? All of these uh, questions. So the first and the shortest answer to that is yes, you are recorded every time you go into that classroom and you turn on the camera. You are recorded. But let me just say, it is your best friend because whenever there's any question about something in your classroom, they can always go back and verify it. Now, I will say that I have had multiple classes verified for me for different reasons. One, um, I've emailed them and said a student level needed to be adjusted and maybe there was some conflict between what I was saying and what the parents were thinking and so then a Chinese lead teacher goes in and takes a look at that and she says, oh yes, this needs to be adjusted. I'm, I'm watching the attempts at all the interaction and the student just isn't understanding. So in the interest of the, of the student, we want to make the adjustment. Now that final call does go to the parent. So just understand it's not necessarily uh, your fault or a VIP kid's fault that that the, the adjustment doesn't get made because the parents make that final call. But that feedback saved me because they were able to go back in and watch it and say, oh yeah, look, you're struggling with this student and I see why. So we're gonna fix this for you. And so they did. Um, another one I had was a, a question regarding a, um, a situation where I had a student switch out where one student was um, supposed to be in the classroom and they switched to his, he's 11 year old boy and they switched to his um, five year old brother. And that was an inappropriate, according to the protocol that we received in our latest update, we're not supposed to be teaching siblings. And I had two of them sitting there and they put the younger one, the headphones on the younger one because he was a jabber box and he would, he would repeat everything. And then that would help the older one. And that obviously isn't isn't going to work right. So I, I um, followed the update, what it said, which was to close down my camera, 
um, make a comment to that effect. Then I did um, interact with the fireman a little bit on it. Um, but the point is that when I, when I sent an email back to education to explain to them when I submitted a ticket actually, and explain to them what was going on and the concern, they watched the feedback and then they addressed it and then they replied to me and told me what, you know, exactly I needed to do, my steps. So the feedback, again, saved me. I, I have had multiple situations where they've gone in and watched my feedback. One time, um, it was marked as a teacher IT, and they went in and they watched my feedback, and they said, oops, our mistake. It was a student IT, and so they fixed it for me. So that feedback is actually a good thing. Now, don't assume every time you're being videotaped that there's someone just sitting there intently staring at everything that you're doing for the entire hour, because that's probably not the case. When you think about 10,000 teachers and all these multiple screens that um, potential firemen are having to address, I'm sure they're not just sitting there with a cup of coffee watching little old me, you know, in Michigan attempt to, you know, teach a class. I'm sure they have a lot of things going on in front of them and they probably zero in on, um, you know, if there's an issue or if you send them a note or if they can see that something is happening. Second thing I wanted to mention is, um, is that they do know when your student is late. So they are warned and notified when your student is late to class. So you don't have to do anything. Just wait. Just wait until the fireman does something. When you enter into the classroom and you look, your name is at the bottom where your face will be when you open the camera. Prior to opening the camera, your name is there. They know you're there. Okay, so they know you are in class. So they don't have to wait for you to say, I'm here. They don't have to wait for you to open up the camera. Um, they know that you're there. Uh, I can tell you from multiple experiences, they know you're there. So what happens is they get a little noti notification in Beijing when a student doesn't log in when they should be logged in. And usually they give them a little bit of time and then I'll get a message that will say, hold on teacher, you know, I'll call or um, you know, wait the full 25 minutes and then you wait and then your interaction becomes between you and the fireman. Leave them alone, leave the fireman alone, let them do their thing because they will do their thing. If they don't do their thing, that's them, not you. Um, I usually wait and if I don't hear anything from them in about seven minutes, five to seven minutes, I'll just stick a note on there and say, hey, no student. And usually I'll get back, we know. But, but I just um, don't immediately, oh, no student, ah, firemen, you know, because they know. They have a whole system set up that triggers for them to let them know that the student, in fact, has not logged in when he should be. And then they'll get on the phone and they'll start to call and say, mom, you know, where are you? And sometimes the class gets canceled because the parents have forgotten or you'll see the kid come rushing in and the camera will fly open and there they are. Which leads me to my next question. What do you do when they come flying in at eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 19 minutes? I had a teacher tell me this week, 19 minutes, and they wanted to take the class. You do your best. That's all you can do. You do not owe them more than the 28 mark, okay? Because that's all you can do. So if you have a student enter that classroom at 19 minutes, you're teaching until the 28 minute mark and you're gonna do the very best that you can to get some concepts in, some material in, and then you're gonna end it and be out of that classroom at 28 minutes. So um, just so you're aware, it's not your responsibility. Uh, I had a teacher that said I just kept going because I felt bad and I kept teaching and I didn't have another class and no. <laughs> I use this with my students in class all the time when, when I want to say, I think we do not equal. Sometimes we'll do the not equal sign for the math and I'll go, Arr. so I'm telling you, teacher, Arr, don't do it. Don't go past that 28. That's it. Boom. That's your cutoff. So they know in Beijing that you've logged on. They know that you've ended a class and the student has turned off his camera and if there's a question at all about if you taught the full 25 minutes 
that's where that feedback comes in. They'll go back in and they'll watch it. I'm saying feedback, but I mean playback, just so you know. Playback comes in. They'll go to that playback and they'll say, let's say the parent writes in and says, oh, this teacher only taught 22 minutes. Then they'll go back and they'll look at the playback and they'll watch. Here's when the camera opened. Here's when the camera closed. Here's how many minutes were taught. There you go. So um, that playback can be your best friend. So don't fear it. Embrace it. Embrace the playback. So there, there's that. Okay, so we have the clock and we have the, the playback. And um, the other big question that I, ha I was asked about is uh, feedback. Um, I was asked um, about feedback and about the 24-hour box. And I wanted to just remind everybody of this because I'm getting a lot of questions that actually are covered in the teacher PDFs that we get way back when we first went through the demo and the interview and then watched all those videos and struggled to stay awake through all of them. Well, now they're your new best friend and they can be found, and I just wanna make sure I say this correctly, they can be found in your teacher portal at any time for you to review under Teaching Center. When you open up your teaching portal, it'll take you to your booking um, page. Just to the left of booking, it says Teaching Center, and if you click on that, it will give you all of the nice videos that we have, been, have watched prior to becoming teachers. A very good PDF, I, I, I just have it downloaded and I send it to people because sometimes they can't find it, but a good one is on unit assessments because people freak when they get a unit assessment. So that's my next point. But um, So go in there and look in Teacher Center and find the information that you might need for some of your questions. They will be in there. Um, when doing feedback, that's the question I, sh I was roundabout getting to. When doing your feedback, uh, the question that I was asked was when you pull the box down and you do the feedback for just a normal class, just a normal everyday class, up in the right hand corner it says add feedback. Click on that button and it will pull up two little spaces. The top space is going to go to the parent. Be prepared. It's going to the parent. So send a note to the parent there. My personal side note here, just stepping aside, okay, this is me, me personally. This is not what anyone other teacher says. This is not what any policy says. This is just Carol's little box right here. Make it short and simple. Guys, it's going to get translated. And if you've ever read your feedback that you get from the parents and how you don't understand it, think about that. Now. I do not recommend that you go and try to do all your feedbacks and, and translate them and make them sound pretty. You don't have time for that. That's not the move to make. What you should do is keep it simple. Use simple words. A lot of times I've been reading a lot on Fresh Desk about all these, you know, very elaborate, um, detailed feedbacks. And all it's going to do is be a jumbled, crazy hot mess when that parent reads it. So... Write it and keep it simple. If there's a big question about your feedback and the parent writes in to the, um, to the VIP kid, a Chinese person's gonna read that who is multi bilingual and they will, they will help them with it. But you do not need to be writing a book, okay? You need to give them, here's how Johnny did in school and class today, here's what Johnny accomplished in class today, Here's what Johnny needs to work on in class because based on class, here's some things he needs to review. Here's some things he struggled with. Just FYI, he might have, um, you know, to look over his sight words and here's a few of them or here's a sentence structure he could review. And then thank you so much for the honor of allowing me to teach your child. The end. Okay, I'll see you again soon, whatever. Keep it simple, layer it. Good thing, here's the little problem that we need to address. You know, not a problem, it's just education they gotta learn. And, and then that, that, that baseline, thank you so much, and I hope to see you again soon in my classroom. So keep it simple, guys. The KISS rule is very much in effect with, with feedback. 
Anyway, that can be found right hand corner. Click add feedback. It pops down. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to submit this? And you hit submit and then you go. The next step for those of you who have asked is if you have a class after that, you can hit your back browser and go right back to the teacher portal or you can have a secondary tab that you can click and you're already in the in the, another um, whole page of the portal and you can just go to your next class. There's multiple ways of doing it. If you're just all done for the day and you want to say sayonara to all things VIP for the day, you hit exit classroom or you just you can just X out of your browser. So those are a few things that I was asked about. Um, the other thing, getting teacher information. Teacher information can come to you, oh, my phone's not here, via the app. You can read the teacher's information, um, uh, what the other teachers have had to say about the student inside the app or in that little button, right hand corner, top, it says info. I like to take a look at that sometimes. Usually in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee, I hit info on a few kids if they're new. And I'll read up on them a little bit and see what the teachers have to say. So I know what to be prepared for. And often it helps me just to know, okay, young learner, I'm going to have to adjust my thinking this way or, or older learner, good reader, good whatever, I might need to extend and elaborate more today. So those are those two buttons up in the right corner that are real important. The clock. It's going to keep on ticking until you leave. It's going to tick and it's going to tick and it's going to tick. If you come back later and you go into the classroom, it'll tick and tick and tick some more. So don't worry about that clock. Just let that clock do its thing, okay? You teach 25 to 28 minutes and you let the clock go. Start on time and on time, don't worry about the clock. All right, that's a big one. I've gotten asked that a lot this week. Um, and then the very last thing, I just want to mention um, is the 24 hour box clicking that 24 hour box um, it's my best friend I use it all the time I use it for everything um, I will say that usually if I have a 24 hour box checked and it's the first class of the day when I go to bed at night I turn it off because I don't want to surprise and I want to turn my alarm on um, I, I start teaching at 4 a.m. So let's say like tomorrow I'm scheduled for 4.30 a.m. My 4 o'clock class is already finished because the student canceled. But let's say that was a 24-hour box and it was open. I would not go to bed with that open because I would be planning in my mind on teaching at 4.30 a.m. where I'm booked. So I want to turn that off because that's me. Now, if you're the type that wants to get up at 3 and check it, you can leave it out open if you want. That's great. But the other, the flip side, and I've had this happen actually multiple times. I start at 4 a.m. I teach to the 9.30, I teach the 9.30 class and I end at 10 o'clock. Sometimes the 9.30 class isn't booked right away. But by the time I get going at 4 a.m., it gets booked. So I, I refresh my browser on a regular basis through the morning and I look to see, hmm, did I get snagged at 9.30? Because the chances are I may, and I usually do. Very rarely does it sit open and I, and I just end. So it can be booked during that time. My suggestion to you is this. Here's what I do every day. I come in, I log in, I open my email, I open up three browsers three VIP Kid browsers. I open three different ones that they've given us, the, the different um, sites. I get everybody, I get myself always to the booking page on every one of them. I am always ready to hop to another browser, another server, according to them. And I'm always ready to be able to flip to the other tab and hit my next class and go if I'm having trouble getting the current one I'm working on to load or something like that. I can just click it off and go to the next one. So that's my practice. I open three of them and I have them sitting there waiting for me. So often what I'll do, I'll go to do my feedback and I'll think, oh, I wonder if 930 got booked yet. I'll flip over to the next tab and I'll refresh it. Refresh it. It won't show if you didn't refresh. I'll refresh it and I'll see, oh, did it get snagged, not snagged? Did it get a cancellation? Did something happen where a student IT problem or whatever class finished? Um, so I often do that. I often pull up my feedback, flip to the next browser, hit refresh, see what's going on, and then come back. So that's just a regular habit that I do. Uh, it might help you, um, but 
for sure, for sure, opening up multiple tabs is helpful because then you have that quick next server to use because they've given us now multiple servers that we can use. We have the US base, the Beijing one, and then there's that the other one, the third one that's um, also Beijing based, but a different um, site. So I have all of these going and I'm at any time can flip, flip to the next one if I'm having trouble. So that's another good, you know, little tip there. Um, but the 24 hour box, don't let it catch you because it can bite you. If you are not aware of it and you go to bed and you get booked and you wake up and you're not up in time for, for a 4 a.m. class or you're not ready and you're not at the computer and you're sipping away at your coffee and you're supposed to be teaching at four and you think you're not teaching till 430, it's because you didn't close down that box. So remember that 24 hour box, that's one hour window. That's a one hour window where somebody can snag you. So you need to be ready if you want to click that box. If you um, if you just aren't ready for it or can't do it or don't want to, then you're free to close it down before it gets booked. You're free to close it down. And that brings me to my final point. I had a lot of them this week. It's been a busy week of emails. You may, you may close down a slot at any time if it is not booked. So let's say I'm booked tomorrow from, let's say I'm, I'm open tomorrow from 4 a.m. till 10 a.m. But my 9.30 class didn't get booked. I can go in right now and go, eh, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't want a class then. Because, you know, I could, I could get one between now and by the time I get to 9.30. So I, I don't want it. I want to I get done early tomorrow and go have breakfast with a friend. So I'm going to go and I'm going to turn it off right now. And you can do that. You can just literally click the box, turn the whole thing off. You don't even see that it, that it's been open. You are free to do that inside your schedule as long as you are not booked. If you are booked, then you need to pay attention to what we just got in the update, which is all the whole cancellation policies. And those are things that I don't highly recommend. We don't want to cancel. So um, keep a really close eye on it. I watch my schedule daily multiple, multiple times a day. In the morning, first thing, during my classes, during my um, feedback time, I'm always checking to make sure nothing has changed. I do that periodically. I do it after I'm done with classes and I'm all done with everything for the day. Before I shut down my computer, I take a look at what the next day holds for me and I see where I'm scheduled and what my hours are and make sure that I'm good and I'm solid. Usually before bed, I take another close look and I see and make sure that something hasn't changed in my schedule and that I'm not, I don't have a 24 hour box opened ahead of my first class. That's just my rule. If it's, if I'm booked at 430, I don't ever have a box open before that, before I go to bed. I just, I just shut that down because I don't want to take a chance because I'll just sleep. So those are some things that came up this week. It was a mouthful. I'm so sorry. But I'm telling you, I had tons of emails with a lot of different things. All right. On to my fun story of the day, and then I'm done. My fun story of the day is I have a student who is five years old. He's been my new new little buddy. Um, his dad uh, regularly gives me feedback, has talked to me in class. Um, they really want him to learn English. Um, and he, he, it was a struggle at first. It was one of those ones I didn't necessarily, wasn't excited about because it was such a struggle. But I'm telling you now, it's been so fun. Um, I've had a lot of communication with the father um, during class because he will ask me how to guide him through something. And so sometimes I'll hop on class and he'll just say, now I got your feedback and here's my question real quick. And then he will literally step back and get out of the picture. And he sits there. And, you know, I'll see like the kid will get crazy and then I'll see the hand of the father come down and then the kid, <laughs> he's focused again and the kid gets crazy and then the dad, you know, brings him down or sets him, makes sure he sits back. So the dad is on top of it, but not a helicopter dad. He's not the dad that's hovering and driving you crazy. He's just in the background, making sure that the student is behaving. And if the student starts to get silly, you know, he'll, he'll tell him real quick, you know, hey, hey. So um, one of the things that the dad and I discussed is that um, he, he said, I, I want him to, um, I, I want to stay in the background. I keep him physically doing what he should be doing, 
but he, um, I'm okay with you giving him or me direction. So I, I do. And so, um, the, the boy was getting out of hand, um, the other day. And so I, Hey, listen, 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 you're, you're talking and playing. You need to hear me. Listen. And that kid just set up as straight as could be. And all I got was this. This is the funniest thing. I got this. So I'm going off camera because I'm going to be the dad now. I just got this. <laughs> the dad was glad. I, I gave it to him. And he said nothing. He said not a word. He let me take it. And and I tell you, it was like, oh, parent of the year. Could I really want him to do a, a, a workshop for all the other parents on how it gets done. Um, I do have plenty of parents that sit in the corner and they never say a word and they, they listen and observe, but they, they you don't even know they're there. I, I found out I've been teaching a boy now for six weeks. I have him tomorrow again. I have him every week, multiple times a week. I've been teaching him regularly and he was showing me his room and he did a pan and his dad was just laying on the bed working on his iPad and he just kind of waved at me and that's when I realized, oh, I think his dad's in the room all the time and I just never, I never knew. Um, so I do have good parents like that. But this particular dad really, really got um, into the idea that he was to sit in the background and he really helped me out with that because he's given me that control and then the ability to run that class. So the little boy looks up at his dad and he just, he got all shocked and everything. And then in Chinese, he said to his dad, oh, the teacher just, the teacher just was like, oh, I don't even know how to say it. I'm trying to think of the translation, the English translation, peeping me. She like criticized me is, is kind of how it's talked. And if you look at it in, um, Google Translate, it will say criticize, but really what it means is like to get on me. You know, she got on me um, for it and he just got like that. And then he just looked at me and he turned and looked at me and he sat real still and stared at the camera and I said, thank you. Good job. Okay, now you and I are going to talk. You know, we're going to talk. Okay, you know, so, um, so, you know, that was my funny little thing for the day. Just that little thumbs up from the dad really meant a lot. You know, it was an encouragement to me. So, for all you new teachers out there, there's crazy amounts of crazy stuff that you have to learn. Hit Fresh Desk. Make sure you hit Fresh Desk and look around. Make sure, and here's my caveat to every single solitary group that's out there. There's Twitter and Instagram and Facebook groups and there's Fresh Desk and there's all of that. And there's just tons of pooled information. Be smart. Take your information from the right source. And what would that right source be? The company, right? The company. So when everybody's telling you this is what you should do when two siblings are taking the class or this is what you should do when your student does this and they're not supposed to, the parents or, or the, the other teachers could say anything they want, but go look at the update that we just got that tells us about it. And if you don't know, send a ticket in and ask the company because sometimes policies change. Sometimes people interpret it differently. There's all kinds of things that are going on. Pay attention, get your information from the right place. Sometimes those Facebook groups can have a lot of crazy stuff that gets said. I've heard them. Sometimes the, sometimes the teachers have outdated information because they've worked for two years and that policy's changed five times and they didn't see the last update. So, and sometimes we're just wrong. Sometimes we just read it wrong. We interpret it wrong. So go to the source, go always to the source. If in, if in doubt, go to the source. Have a great day.